Get ready, cause here I come. All right. Ready, roll. Very lively audience I see today. All right. Uh, now we're getting ready to uh, you know, Thursday as always, and uh, you know, 24 hours away or 48 hours away. Yeah, that's Thursday to Friday. That's 24. Friday to Saturday. That's 24. So, yeah, 48 minus or add 15. So 40 hours, 15 minutes. The kickoff. So uh, excited to go up and play a good football team. You know, they've. Uh, you, you look at the, the games they've played this year. You know, it was a, the 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 losses they had were a uh, you know overtime loss to uh, to Vanderbilt, a, a three point loss, uh, uh, Rutgers, and you know a, a game, an absolute well of a football game versus versus Miami, and which you know I'm sure people could argue either way at the end of that one. So uh, you know then as a coach, as a coach, you don't get look at standings or look at those things, but then. Yeah, you're looking at the other teams that are playing on the thing and then on the you know sheet during the week, and you look at the other teams' records and the different things. You start looking around, and you see the, the 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 records of the team in conference and, and who they've beat and who they've lost to. And really, the whole point being is just the parity in college football right now. And then uh, you know you going them doing those things and you're putting notes together for meetings today and you know game plan notes and watching tape. And I look up and you know Kennesaw State's winning the game last night and ends up winning that football game. So uh, huge, huge congratulations to, to Brian and, and, and their entire staff and their team at, at Kennesaw last night for what a huge win for them. Uh, but you just see how anybody on any given day can beat anybody in college football. <clears throat> and I think it's only going to continue to get more and more that way. So uh, I think it's what makes it, makes it exciting and makes uh, the opportunity to go up to Virginia Tech. And when you look you know, paper to paper or film to film, I think two really, uh, really pretty even football teams. Uh, two even football teams uh, might do things different ways, uh, but the, the build of it and uh, what we do offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, I mean, even down to two Brents. I mean, pretty similar. So, uh, no, but Brent does a good job. He's a good football coach. <clears throat> uh, he's you know going in now, uh, what third year I believe there, and and you know. Every year you see them getting better, but not just every year. You see them improving during the week and correcting uh, mistakes they might have made previously. So uh, and it's going to be a good environment, really good environment for our guys to go up and play in. Uh, probably not a lot of guys, uh, 25, 30 or so, that were, were up there two years ago. So it's an opportunity to go play in a good environment in, in conference, uh, early kickoff game, so we can get ready to uh, wake up and go play football. So excited about it and uh, really ready to get up there and go play. Okay. Questions, Kelly? Their quarterback's pretty dynamic and, mm -hmm. and dual threat guy. Yeah. Um, just what kind of difficulty does that re represent when you play those guys that can extend plays? Zeke talked a lot about you know trying to um, cage the quarterback and those things, not getting caught in over pursuit and stuff with your D line. Just how how difficult is that to prepare for when you have a guy that can <clears throat> extend plays with his legs and his arm? Yeah, well, any time in, in football, especially college football, when you've got a quarterback that can do both and can break you down. I mean, you know, now in the passing game, you're playing man-to-man -man coverage. You got guys turning their backs uh, to the line of scrimmage. You know, you got to be cage responsible uh, in, in pass rush. So it takes a little bit of the, uh, the the freedom away from those guys to do do things. Uh, you know, but you know we've got to be responsible responsible with that. But just his ability to run, uh, you know, he, he reminds me a lot of uh, even you know with his the size and the build and the way he carries himself. And, you know, he reminds you a lot of Jalen Hurts uh, with what he does on the field. You know, um, the way he runs around, he's a big, strong kid. Uh, uh, you know, they do a good job of with, with, with the concepts that, that he's throwing and who he's throwing to, and then they do a really good job in their run game, whether it be him, uh, you know, <clears throat> on a on a quarterback run, a draw, a scramble, or a, a, or some sort of a replay. I guess it's going to be a big test for the offensive line with, you know, they, I believe they have 25 sacks and uh, pa uh, Powell Ryland has 11 by himself. So, it, uh, you know, to try to keep the quarterback clean is going to be a big test. Yes, sir. Is that another question or a statement? That was a statement again, Rod. <laughs> that was not a question. That was not a question. Huh? At the end of a statement is not made a good question. Question. Okay. There we go. Uh, what's the question? No, it will. It's going to be a really big challenge. Uh, you know, 
named Corey Robinson, one of the captains this week. Corey's, Corey's going Corey's to a, a, you know, play good football on Saturday. Yeah, he's got a, a good challenge, a big challenge, but you know, with every challenge is an opportunity, and it's an opportunity for him. And you know, I've been proud of Corey the way he's uh, last year, you know, early on, kept battling, kept working, ended up you know, the last, uh, latter part of the season uh, playing good football for us. And then you know, injury bug caught him early this year and missed some time. And, Worked his way back into it and, and back in there established himself and just keeps on grinding, keep on you know, you know pushing through and you know I've been proud of Corey. So he's going to have a big football game. Same with Jordan uh, and then the guys inside. I mean, they, they move, they they stunt, they blitz. I mean, we got to be respon you know, responsible with our assignment and, and, and our rules of what we have in the run game and protection. So it'll be a big challenge for us. Let's go back to special teams. Uh, have you looked at making any personnel changes when it comes to coverages and things like that? And then, you know, coaching wise, is it still Ricky's operation? Have you asked other guys on staff to maybe help out? In that yeah, area? you know, it's uh, as far as personnel goes. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and talk personnel by any means uh, in there, but uh, I would just say on Saturday that we're going to put the people out there to give us the best opportunity to win based on the uh, based on the information and that we have from game uh, previous games and. You know, I, th I think I talked on Tuesday about you know, practicing during the week and then the execution of, of during on Saturdays. Or they've got to they've got to marry up, and you know we we got to put the best people out there to execute on Saturday. You talked a lot about tackling on Tuesday, and not only does Virginia Tech have a dynamic quarterback, they have one of the nation's leading rushers. How important is it going to be to be improved in in tackling this Saturday? Extremely. I mean, <clears throat> you know that's something we'd. You know, made a lot of improvement in early in the season, all right? And it's just, you know, is the first really you know third of the season, and then um, you know, we were I think it was second game, yeah. You know, we had some some open field missed tackles, and then you know, kind of came back from those and, and played a couple of games. You know, did a good job, and then so it's been kind of like this, you know. So we got to continue on the upward trend with that. Uh, you know, those, those guys, and I've talked very strongly. To those guys, in, 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 as a group, um, you know, as a, as a team, as or as a defense, uh, and even offensive guys that are on special teams making tackles, but you know, they gotta have the confidence to, to go do it. And that doesn't mean that they're they're afraid. It doesn't mean that they're they don't they don't think they can do it. Right? But when their their numbers called, you know, let's let's go 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 pull the string, go do it, and and trust those other guys are going to be behind you. So and that's what I want them to do. I want, these, I want them to go cut loose. Don't try to be perfect. You know, don't try to play not to make a mistake. I mean, look, mistakes are going to happen. We know that. So let's, let's go cut it loose and go play. Kelly. We've talked a lot about the middle third of the game. And it seems like the start of the third quarter all, all season, the offense has struggled on the first drive or whatever, for whatever reason. And that's usually you know, coming out adjustments both sides. and. Maybe some tightness. Are you sensing kind of is there a commonality in the issues you've seen there, or is it just a lack of execution or anything in particular you put your finger on? Yeah, it's it's there's no one uh, one thing one common thing to it. There's really not. There, there's several things. Uh, you know, a couple of those things are you know my two o'clock meeting this afternoon with with coaches. But we're going to talk through those things. Uh, you know, I'm a believer in adjustments. You don't wait till halftime. You make adjustments right away. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously we got to do a better job of, of coming out and, and, and being able to sustain a drive in, in the second half, all right, and not have that lull, uh, you know, take place. You know, credit to the guys. I do, I do believe that um, after that they've then come back and, and, and had success and done well. So, uh, you know, but yeah, that 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 whatever it is in there, we've, that's something we've uh, we've addressed, but also spent a lot of time on looking at and. I won't go any further with it, but uh, glad you see what I see, Kelly. Chad, <laughs> you want to uh, run down some injuries with us? Run down. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a huge runner anymore. Yeah. Would you like to discuss some injuries with us? I, we're about out of time. We okay. don't have enough time. <laughs> how's uh, How's Kyle Eford? Kyle has been practicing. Uh, you know, still limited in practice. You know, we'll see where he's at on Saturday. Uh, you know, it'll it'll probably be a Truly a pregame, see what he's able to go out and do and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, the other guys are getting reps and preparing if you can. Rodney Shelley? He didn't play last week, right? Correct. Okay. Making sure. Yeah. You know, and he was close last week. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, if he continues on the trend he's, that, he's, that he is right now, <clears throat> I would be very hopeful. I know there's like questionable, doubtful, probable. All right, I've got hopeful on a lot of them right now. Okay. <laughs> well, H. But yeah, that's a new that's a new uh, category on the injury report. It's hopeful. Uh, how about Trey Cooley and Haynes King? Yeah, uh, and, and Haynes King. It's very it's very in. Uh, no, we've uh, uh, Trey Cooley has had the most uh, practice reps he's had uh, this week that he's had in, in, in quite a while. Uh, so I've been pleased to see uh, to see him be able to come back uh, and, and start to progress at, at a good good pace. Uh, again, he's in that H category, hopeful. Uh, and then Haynes, uh, you know, if we were to play right now, it'd be a no. If we were to play right now, it'd be a no. Uh, you know, I'm still we're still going to keep him day to day, but I would say it, it's uh, it's capital H hopeful that, that he would be able to go. Um, you know, but those things do have different timetables. Uh, he's improving every day. Um, you know, but when hopeful goes closer to doubtful. But no, if it was something that you know definitely would be out right now, we'd say it. Uh, but I'm still holding on hope. But I'm confident the other guys too. So. Rob. Talking about the the Virginia Tech run game and. Uh, their running back had a big game last game. How important is it for your linebackers to play a bigger role in stopping the run this week? Yeah, uh, they've got to be able to play off the D-line for sure, uh, attack their gaps, um, be confident in their, in their fits, uh, and confident, confident in their responsibility with their fits, whether you know, you're, you're spilling it, you're boxing it, who you're sending it to, and the safety coming and, and filling as well. But, uh, yeah, they got to play well. You know, and hopefully if Kyle – Kyle is in there, you know, he, he can, you know, but whether Kyle's in there or not in there, we've still got, you know, job to do and got responsibility to do. And, uh, you can't allow Kyle, to, to, who is somewhat of an eraser at times, at, at, at linebacker in the run game. Uh, you know, we've got to be able to, we've got responsibilities we have to carry out as well uh, when he's not in there. So, and look, you know, through the whole season, you know, you know, Tyler's done a good job of developing those guys by playing them. There's no better way to, to develop a football player than to play, especially at those positions, the safeties and linebackers, because it's so much uh, you want to be attacking all the time, but there is a reactionary part of it based on you know where the gaps open and where the gaps you know start to develop. Uh, you know the keys between run, pass, play, action, those things, RPOs. So the experience is only going to continue to help those guys and out there playing. Uh, I was curious, Malik's status. He got banged up at the end of the game, and then. Good to go. And then um, Bailey Stockton's a guy that's started to flash a little bit and show kind of what you guys were very excited about mm -hmm. last year. And they got hurt in camp or whatever. But just what have you seen from him and, and trying to develop a little bit of depth behind Malik so you have? Well, it's exactly that. Bailey's going to be a really good player. He is a good player. He's improved a lot in the last year. Uh, everyone, my, you know, start with myself, uh, the offensive staff, we're all extremely confident in Bailey Stockton to be in there. And, you know, it's helped take some of those reps off of Malik, who, who who has so many reps. And as Bailey continues to get the experience that Malik has, you know, Malik's a crafty, crafty little player now, and knows the game very well. Has a lot of banked reps behind him of things having happened. And you got to think, last year now Malik was what his third year or whatnot. And you know, there's still times where there was a, you know, break in, break out, and different things. And so you know, when you play in the slot, there's a, it's a, the skill set you have to have in there is a lot of it, a lot of it's mental too. Right, of understanding you know coverages, understanding adjustments, understanding how defenses play, and then being on the same page with the quarterback. And uh, I, I, I've been extremely happy with Bailey and his development. Anything else? All right, appreciate it, guys. Go Jackets.